and the first point on the agenda is open forum if anyone has any questions or issues which are not on the agenda Okay, not hearing anyone. I hope someone can hear me actually. Yeah, uh, I can hear you. There we go. The, I asked a question on Slack today. I don't know if now is the right time to bring it up or just add it to the agenda. If you ask it on Slack, then it's probably to be discussed on Slack. Okay, so let's yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Let's discuss it there. So heads up, there's a question on Slack if people are interested. Thanks. <laughs> I mean if you discuss it now here, then yeah, it stays undiscussed on Slack. Yeah, true. Yes, yes, that's why I think that's a good yeah, exactly. Let's keep it there. Okay, then the next point on the agenda is to go through some of the issues for triage. So let's go through some of them. Paul, Tom, did you have the chance to discuss this one not yet i must admit i saw that in my email but i've uh, not got back to it i'll add it to my to-do list for today okay sorry about that and then there was this one which we discussed before as well so lukash reproduced it and shared the topic operator logs so i assume we keep it as a bug yeah Okay, then we have this issue about not renewed certificates. Unfortunately, the lock is only from the expired certificates and it's not from the time and they were supposed to be renewed. So I'm not sure if we can figure something out from this. And if it makes sense to keep it open. Any thoughts from anyone? Yeah, I think we should at least keep it open. And has anyone tried to replicate it? The renewal is in the tests and you can try yeah, it manually, but you will not reproduce it out of the box. The only other option would be to ask whoever raised the issue if, if they can try and test it, because I guess the fear from their side would be, what if this happens again? But if they can change the um renewal so th and sort of watch it happen and, and see if it works that would be helpful okay so what do we want to say there
you you say unfortunately without the logs there's no way for us to determine why the um, renewal didn't happen we're not aware of any known problems with the renewal um, so it would be useful to collect logs the next time the certificates are due for renewal and verify whether they renew correctly at that point and if not then share the logs from before and at, like from the point at which the renewal was expected I assume I ask for the logs. And they don't have the logs. Like this. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good to me. Keep it open till next time. Okay. What about this thing? Which to be honest seems quite weird because it looks to me like an issue with the garbage collection or someone holding some finalizers on the resources. So I'm not sure we can really do much about this as we don't actually delete the resources. Does it say exactly which resources get left for this period of time? Or is it all of them? He Sorry, Kate. Well, he said it was the complete cluster, so I think he's saying everything. Yeah. Kafka, Zookeeper, Stable Sets, Entity Operation Deployment Services, PVC. But the PVC will always stay there, won't it? Yeah. I mean, that makes it sound very much like it's just a problem with garbage collection. So should we close it? I think so. This looks more like a Kubernetes issue than a Strimzy one. Yeah, and they even said, I think, that it only happens on like one particular cluster or something. Problem seems isolated on our central cluster where there seemed to be some sort of problem with garbage collection. So it's not really related to Strimsy. Yeah, I mean, unless they can point to some configuration thing of that cluster, you know, I mean, sort of Kubernetes level configuration of that cluster, which, you know, might explain it, then I, it doesn't look like this, this is something that we can really investigate further. And it doesn't look like it's our problem, so. 
no they've they've literally like written in one of the comments it's not really related to strimsy in terms of the fundamental problem and it sounds like they were happy with all of the answers so i guess the only thing to say was like let us know if you did have any more questions but this isn't something we can necessarily fix in strimsy Okay, so like this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what about this one, which is actually more about the website, but we can triage it here as well, I'm sure. Yeah, I don't think there's much for us to do here. You've you've made a good argument that just saying, yes, we, we could take it out, but then that might break, you know, break things for other people. And it also sounds like this, this guy was just saying, there's a difference. Is this an issue? And I don't think there is. Yeah, I agree. The comment I wrote in my notes was, I think we can close this. So like this. Yeah. Okay. Did you skip the topic operator allows forbidden settings one? Okay. No, that's the one Lukash was looking. Into. All right, so we're so still. We just we just removed the label after he provided the locks and so on. Okay. <sighs> okay, so I guess I opened this more as an enhancement, not necessarily as a bug. Uh, we don't really, when the user wants to push the container image built in the Kafka connect build into the image stream. We don't really validate uh, if the image stream exists. So yeah, this might be a small improvement for someone who would want to contribute something. I'm not sure why I gave it the bug label because I don't think it's really bug, but Yeah, I think this is a good issue to keep open and could be useful. One of the things there is, is that it needs to add the image stream operator to the resource operator supplies, supplier in the, in the internal code. So I'm not entirely sure this is a good start issue, but it might be good for someone kind of as a, I don't know, third, fourth, fifth issue for someone or something like that. Yeah, I think that makes sense.
Okay, this is a bug raised by Liam, so I assume we want to fix this. Yeah, last time I spoke to him about this, I'm sure he said he made some progress on it or had a PR for it, but yeah, it doesn't seem to be. You mean for around. fixing these tests or? Yeah, for for the general checkpoint context, the context completion bug. But maybe I'm thinking of something else. But yes, we should definitely fix this. I think, I don't remember him saying that he worked on this particular bug in these tests. I know he talked with Vertex about changing the behavior so that it kind of doesn't, isn't silent, but that, for example, Vertex is raising errors when uh, you use it incorrectly. But I'm not sure how much progress he made with that. It's certainly something we should sort out. Um, if Liam doesn't have time to do it, this is something I'd happily look at. I had to fix a bunch of issues in a previous project where we had the same thing of not quite understanding <laughs> the um, completion stuff when we wrote the tests and then realizing half of them weren't written quite right. Okay, so will you pick it up or should we mark it as a help wanted or? I'll reach out to Liam and then if neither of us thinks we want to do it, I can um, add the label at that point. Okay, so this was kind of my idea for better separation of the third party lips, at least in some cases. Today, we basically take the Kafka binaries and add all the different third party libraries directly into the Kafka lips directory, be it cruise control, OAuth, tracing, JMX exporter, and so on. So it's all in the same class path. And basically, even when someone doesn't use these, then they are in the class path. So my idea was about kind of modifying the, the class path, the, the structure we have there. And instead of adding all of them into the lips directory to have some separate directories for them. And then the operator or the operand script starting it, they know for these usually whether they are enabled or not enabled. For example, they know that they should set up the JMX exporter agent or the tracing agent. They in general know when OAuth or cruise control is used as well. So when they are actually used, we can then configure the class path to include these jars as well. And that way I thought that it might be a little bit more secure, for example, because in case of some CVEs, uh, if you don't use it, you wouldn't have it in the class path. Whereas today, even if you, I don't know, don't use Jaeger, you always have the Jaeger jars on the class path. So that was the fold. I don't know what others think about it. and. To be honest, it was just a fault. I don't have any prototype implementing it, hiding in my pocket or anything, and I'm not sure I will, I will get to it, but I wanted to have it recorded and discussed. I, I, I think it's a good, I think it's a good idea. We had a chat about this on the Strimzy Slack channel, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. So, um, would those directories I assume it's a directory there that contains both the, like the plugin, the jar complaining the plugin file and also any dependency jars. Yes, correct. So what if there are common dependencies between say, I don't know, OAuth and Jaeger?
they would probably, probably need to be there twice, I guess. But it's going to end up being on a flat class path, so one of them would win. Yeah. It's going to be a uh, a fun edit to the or uh, clash pass Calithan script in the in the build. Or we can write some unholy script to find common things and put them in a common <laughs> common folder as well. Yeah, there's going to be some edge cases here. Yeah, I don't think you can do the common folder because you would need to have a common for cruise control and Jaeger, common for cruise control and OAuth, common for OAuth and Jaeger in theory. Yeah. So I think you might need to more address it with... You'd have to align the common dependencies. Yeah, I think you would need to align the common dependencies as you do today, basically. And then you don't really care. That you, Then basically mm -hmm. the problem of having them twice is that the image is bigger. Hmm. So what do we want to do with this? We want to keep it open and say something like needs proposal to clarify all these issues. Yeah. Yeah, I think a proposal is probably just need to sit down and think about them all. Yeah, I think keeping it open and suggesting that the way forward is a proposal is the right way. Should we mark it as help wanted if someone would be interested in this? Yeah. Which I doubt a bit, but you never know. Okay. Yeah, so I opened this one, but it was based on Tom's idea. The idea is to kind of have the readiness conditions for the different custom resources we have in the API module so that users who want to use the API module can more easily use the use the readiness condition from there instead of having the construction like this in their own uh, code. I guess that makes sense and we should keep it. Yeah, this sounds useful to me. Could be a good first issue.
yeah, I guess this this could be a good first issue. Like this. Okay. Uh. Yeah, so this is just an issue opened from some discussion. I'm not sure there's anything actionable we can really do here. It's about how the Prometheus files in our examples are, but I mean, we always knew that these are just examples and and not necessarily production ready Prometheus setup, which has to work for everyone's production environment. So I'm not entirely sure what can be done here? As part of the description, they put not sure if this should be filed under discussions or issues. So did they post this before the Slack or the discussion? Oh no, because this is discussed in two. So some users think that if you open things on too many places, you get more answers. Like yeah. if you don't get answer on Stack Overflow in five minutes, let's open a discussion on Streamzy. If you don't get answer there in another five minutes, let's open issue. And if you don't get the answer there, let's try Slack or let's ask uh, at the post office. <laughs> to be honest, I hate this because it leaves the questions unanswered somewhere usually. But I think this was one of the cases. So there was a discussion and then the user decided to open issue from it for some reason. Yeah, I'd say close saying, um, see discussion 7095 for full discussion. Okay, and the last one. Is so I think, this, I think this sounds like a good idea, but that's because I've only spent five minutes thinking about it. But maybe he needs proposal because I, I, off the top of my head, I think this is a good idea, but I, <laughs> there might be hidden depths to this one. Uh, do we filter on topic ID and, or, you know, do we filter on name? Cause I think the topic operator only does names at the minute. I'm just trying to, there's probably some edge case here. I'm not catching, but it could be quite useful. It could be a useful way to have it, to have the topic operator manage only the topics that you want to like manage specifically and then not manage like the auto-generated ones or things like that? 
I think we have had always had this idea, but I think you will find out that on the practical level, it's not that easy to implement as it, as useful as it sounds. It's probably quite hard to ignore some stuff and you need to also handle the situations where we ignore something, but then someone creates the topic resource and you need to decide how to deal with it and so on. So, Yeah, that's why I was saying, even though it seems a bit heavy handed, a proposal is probably needed to just go over all those cases. Tom, what do you think about it, Tom Bentley? Um, have you got any specific edge cases in mind? Well, well, yeah, I don't. I, off the top of my head, I was just thinking along the same lines as, as Jacob that some is that could someone do a very weird thing that breaks it? But then I suppose that's always true. So I guess one edge case is what do you do with the Kafka topic resources for the topics you should be ignoring, right? When someone actually creates them. You could have a ignored status. And then, yeah, but that's complexity if we are unable to properly set the failed status today. And then like, you can't just I mean with the ignored status you need to still keep track somehow of it to know that you reconciled it and to know that you should not delete the Kafka topic when when yeah, we've, got, uh, we've got the topic store you I mean you're you're right. It's I'm not saying it's like implementation is easy, but conceptually, I'm not immediately seeing an edge case, especially if so. If you had you know if you were sort of had a, like a way of binding patterns to namespaces, and you could guarantee that your patterns were disjoint, so therefore you can't end up um in the case where you can have multiple topics in different namespaces topic resources in different namespaces mapping to the same kafka topic then that sounds like a lot of edge cases if you can guarantee that you don't end up the union of two disjoint regex sets so this is going to be no, no, but you don't you you wouldn't use regexes you'd use prefixes so that you could make right. it you yeah. do the analysis is what I was thinking. See, yeah, this would be into, a fun proposal to talk about, wouldn't it? Don't go into regex territory because regex inclusion is super hard. That, that way madness lies. I, I think it's still a research topic. There's like <laughs> a polynomial time for limited regex. Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. Okay, so... We keep it, we mark it as needs proposal. Yep. We mark it as help wanted or something. I mean, it couldn't hurt. Yeah, I, I mean, don't get a... marking it. Good start, but... Yeah. I think there's a general batch of topic operator improvement issues that are building up. Um, so I just need to have a push on the topic operator at some point. <clears throat> and this could be one of them. Well, to be honest, the part I would be afraid here is that I think there's a big potential of this introducing many new bugs, but yeah, maybe the proposal has some easy way how to do it and so on. So, so I guess these things can be discussed there. Okay, and I closed my window. So I think that's it. These two 
decided to get back to them next time. Are there any PRs or any other issues someone wants to discuss? Are there any proposals someone wants to discuss? Okay, then. Uh, so one news, uh, since we discussed it last time on the community call, there was a new Kafka export release. So we have it already merged in the main branch on Streamzy and it will be part of the Streamzy 031. It has all kind of bug fixes and uh, it used the new Go version for the compilation, which for whatever reason was one of the CVEs reported for all Go applications and so on. So I think that's a good news. Not sure there's that much to discuss about it. But if someone wants to add something, we can, of course, give it the space. Do, do you know what that means for the projects in general? Because I, I think last time we said that the project was uh, kind of abandoned. Like, uh, is it are we expecting releases from now on? Or? I don't know. And I don't think the project is really abandoned it's more about the time daniel has to to spend on it so it's not like he abandoned it it's more like he's busy with other stuff but to be honest i don't even know whether paul reached to him or or didn't since he was on the last call and now he's on pto so i have no idea but yeah, we got new release. Okay, thank you. Okay, then the next point is just a reminder that next time uh, in two weeks, we wanted to go through the survey results through the open text answers so just a reminder that people are aware of it does anyone have any other business or anything else to discuss If not, then uh, thanks a lot for coming. Uh, very good attendance today. And see you next time. Thanks a lot. See you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Alex. Bye.